हे गाइज वेलकम बैक आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल आई गैस यू हैव सीन पार्ट वन वीडियो एंड दिस वीडियो इज पार्ट टू वेर इट टॉक्स अबाउट ट्रेडिशनल ऑक्यूपेशन ऑफ इंडिया अकॉर्डिंग टू एन सी आर टी सिलेबस फॉर टू लेटेस्ट सिलेबस ट्रेडिशनल ऑक्यूपेशन ऑफ इंडिया इन अंडर दिस वी हैव फोर टॉपिक्स मेनली विच आई विल वन टॉक अबाउट इन दिस वीडियो फर्स्ट इज एग्रीकल्चर सेकेंड इज हैंडीक्राफ्ट third is indian cuisine and fourth is visual arts these all topics will be covered in this video in details as far as latest syllabus given by ncert 2020 so guys i have all marked important questions important topics and whatever is required if it is so let's start with an introduction of traditional occupations of india this talks about first point you need to study is dash is one of the richest countries as far as art and culture are concerned now this can come as a one marker question which is the which is the richest country as far as art and culture are concerned so answer is india second is if we talk about the countries which has still ancient and diverse culture our country is one of them third point we know that our country is diverse and despite of diversity there has been cultural and social cohesiveness of an enduring nature if we talk about over the years then stability of the culture can be seen and this is all because of cultural and social practices by human beings though there have been some disruptions disruptions can be due to foreign invasions and upheavals and still the culture still the culture is being maintained so this is re- this makes india richest country as far as art and culture are concerned so i have told you what is important thing and this can come even as a to mark a question what makes india richest country in terms of art and culture so you can sum up the whole paragraph i have told you the points you can write all the points under two markers you can write four points so that will be great thing for you to attempt the answer. now the first topic is agriculture and if we see agriculture in first three lines this says agriculture is the major occupations in our country for a large proportion of the population and this is all because of climatic conditions in most parts of india are suitable for agricultural activities so this can come as a one mark two marker question that why agriculture has been the ma- major occupation in india so you should say because of the climatic conditions in most parts of the india are suitable for agricultural activities now we know that 70% of the population lives in rural areas where the source of employment for million of people is farming so this can also come as a question that which is the largest source of employment for the rural people in india so you should say farming now the third point is that you should understand there are two types of crops grown by the farmers one the farmers which are not that rich but they can grow for selling of the crops they have smaller piece of land or they are not that rich that they can afford good machines or laborers so they only grow as much as they can feed for their for themselves and for their family and second type of uh, farmers are which are selling in the markets and these are the crops like tea coffee cardamom and rubber now the next question which comes which crops are of great economic importance and why so the answer will be these the crops which are tea coffee cardamom and rubber you should give example always when you are quoting your answer are of greater importance economic importance because they bring a lot of foreign exchange to our for our country now the next question can be which is the largest producer of cashew nut coconut milk ginger turmeric and black pepper in the world so answer is india or they can ask what products are produced in very large quantity by our country 
So you, you should know the examples. You should at least know the four examples. India is also the largest producers of fruits and vegetables, spices, condiments and tea. India, the traditional occupation we talk about is also fishing because of the country's very long coastline. So this can also come as a question. So here we finish the agriculture topic. We move on to the next topic that is handicrafts. Handicrafts have been um, considered as one of the traditional occupations in India. Earlier we have talked about fishing and now we are going to talk about traditional occupations that is handicrafts in Indian villages and today if we see arts and crafts are very popular in the international market which actually have become a means of livelihood for the rural folk. That means they are earning a lot of money by selling their products that are handmaids. Some examples that has been made by the people are woodcraft, pottery, metal craft, jewelry making, ivory craft, comb craft, glass, paper craft, embroidery, weaving, dyeing, printing, still craft, sculpture, terracotta, cholapita, craft, dharis, rugs, carpets, clay and iron items etc. Now these are the examples at least you should know four to five examples of the handicrafts. This can come as a one marker question. Now the second thing we are going to talk about here is weaving which is considered as a cottage industry in India and each state has typical woven fabrics, embroideries and traditional costumes which actually make suitable for the region specific climate and lifestyle. That is why if we go to every state we find different costumes, different fabrics, different embroideries. You all know the examples. Go and search for it and let me know. Next is different regions in India that we have already talked about are famous for different types of weaving. India is actually known for its woven fabrics that is famous all over the world. We see in the past we used to weave or do the embroideries or make handicrafts that for daily uses or others for decorative purposes. These occupations and many others are reflective on the basis of socio-economic culture. However, the modern economy has catapulated such craft items into the global market, earning the country considerable foreign exchange. Now these are the pictures you should know. This can come as one marker question for like name the craft of Odisha, which is Shola craft. Name the dolls of Karnataka, Chinnapatna, stone sculpture. Now here we talk about the traditionally, um, you know, earlier the process which we used techniques and skills of the crafting and manufacturing have been, were handed from one generation to the next to the members within the family. They were passed on to. You can see that if the person is, you know, a good businessman, obviously this will be passed on to next generation. And these were the training which were given to the family members within the family and by the family members and this were known as home-based training and the know-how and final nuances were tightly guarded secrets within closed groups in a given occupation obviously these trainings were very secretable that only family members knew about it now if we talk about India the dynamics of religion caste and occupation they have been tightly interwoven coupled with hierarchical order of clusters within the social fabric of the country. There are hundreds of different tradi uh, traditional occupations. You can say for example hunting, trapping birds and animals, gathering and sa uh, selling of foreign produce, garland making, salt making, tapping of nira or palm sap juice, mining, brick and the tile making. So these are the examples. These were considered as traditional occupations. And if we talk about intergenerational traditional occupation, which include priests. So here we finish about the uh, handicrafts, how they were passed on to the family members, techniques and trainings, and uh, some traditional occupants, uh, occupations we have talked about. Now, let's talk about cuisines. 
Now, each, re each region of India has a typical cuisine. If you see for North India, South India, West Bengal, everybody, you know, like taking different cuisines. So, because of diversity in soil types, culture, comma, ethnic groups, and occupations, cuisines vary from region to region. This can come as a one marker question or two markers question. People use locally available spices, herbs, and vegetables and fruits. India is well known for its taste. Tongue tickling cuisines, which has emerged as a source of livelihood for innumerable persons which are getting engaged, from street food vendors to special restaurants and five star hotels. Many popular traditional foods and spices mixes and masalas are in demand in other countries. So we are actually earning a lot of money by sending our spices, herbs to other countries. So here we finish about cuisines. We're gonna move on to the next topic, and that is visual arts. Let's start up with the visual arts. Now these are the pictures which are shown for the embroidery and textiles of India. We just need to see them. We don't need to learn about it. Now let's see for the visual arts. We have been practicing visual arts for over four thousand years. You should know what is a visual art. Visual art is that art that you can see, touch and feel in the material form. We see during history, the artists and artisans were supported by two main categories of patrons, the larger Hindu temples and the princely rulers of various state. We had princely rulers. The main visual arts which were in the context of religious worship. If we go to temples, we can see a lot of artists work distinctive regional styles of architecture in seen different parts of India because of different religions Islam, Sikhism, Jainism, Christianity and Hinduism which typically coexisted across the country so we can see various regional styles of architecture therefore in different places of worship and mo mausoleums, palaces a great variety of images can be seen you can give example like skillfully carved in stone or cast in bronze or silver or modeled in terracotta of wood or colorfully painted were commonly prevalent during that time and this have been preserved in India's vast heritage. This can come as a question to describe India's vast heritage so you should you know make answer from this which I have taught you right now. Now we talk about the modern scenario arts have been preserved and promoted through the efforts of government and several non-governmental organizations providing occupational avenues including entrepreneurship so if we talk about visual arts visual means using your eyes and art that is being done by the people you can find varied art in different regions of india because of the diversity so here we finish about for the visual arts guys i hope you all have understood any doubt you can write in the comment box I will surely answer to your question I have given you important questions in my next video I'm gonna give questions related to this again okay now you can see these pictures worldly painting of Maharashtra and puppetry craft we know that we have rich heritage of traditional occupations which you have talked about earlier and if we talk about the modern context these work of ours are gradually losing out to mass produced goods, leaving the artisans with meager source of income. On the other hand, there have been gradual erosion of the aesthetic appreciation of fine arts. Now, if we see, this is all because of illiteracy, general socio-economic backwardness, slow progress in implementing land reforms and inadequate or inefficient finance of marketing services are major constraint that causes this trend. Now you can see what leads to the gradual erosion of the aesthetic appreciation of fine arts. Shrinkage of forest, depletion of resource base and general environmental degradation are responsible for various problems based in the context. So guys, I hope you have understood. Now let's see the two pictures, coconut craft of Kerala. This was coconut made by coconut. Next is bamboo craft of Assam. So these were particularly from Assam. I hope you have all understood. Now in this paragraph, 
generally we are talking about the art and craft the visual arts the handicrafts are actually being you know uh, promoted by the government and non governmental organizations and there are a lot of efforts and initiative which are being taken so that we can enhance the incoming generation potential of the rural folk and preserve our culture the need of the hour and the challenge confronting in a society is to maintain the diversity without the hierarchy or caste based work division in the democratic milieu so it's all for this video traditional occupations in india you should sum up and understand what is important and you should learn as a flow chart guys all the four topics especially with examples this can come as one markers so uh, i hope you have understood any problem write in the comment box thank you for watching the video i'll gonna upload soon the next video so guys till then take care keep studying keep asking the doubts share and like the video subscribe the channel if you haven't ta da